Hi, good morning, everyone. Welcome to Apache Con 2021. I'm really excited to be present here. Before I start, I would like to share one common limitation with most of the analytic platform in handling real time and batch data. Most of the platforms are optimized for either real time or batch, which means the approach, architecture, resources, uh, components which are used for batch system are completely different from real time versus uh, and vice versa. In today's talk, we are going to see these challenges uh, and we will see how Apache Druid bridge this gap. Before we start, I would like to explain about a challenge I have encountered in my journey as a data engineer. Uh, during this journey, I've used various framework for doing analytics, uh, example, batch system like Apache Hive, Spark, Presto, Flink, whereas the platform like Apache Spark and Spark Streaming, uh, Apache Kafka and uh, uh, Spark Streaming, um, and the like have the capability to analyze the streaming data. This talk is about Apache Druid, uh, how Apache Druid could uh, query real time as well as historical data in subsequent level of latency. Uh, a short introduction about myself. Uh, I'm Tijo Thomas, Senior Solution Architect at Imply. Uh, I started my big data journey from 2013, 14 onwards. Uh, in this journey, I worked with uh, uh, Huawei, Hortonworks, Cloudera, and now I imply what we do. Uh, imply was founded by original creator of Apache Druid. We provide managed service for Druid platform in cloud, Kubernetes, and even on-prem. On uh, we, provide, <coughs> we provide BI tools called um, a pivot um, optimized for Druid workload and also provide a application monitor monitoring tool uh, for managing and monitoring um, Druid, plant, Druid clusters. Um, uh, I will start this talk uh, with a small use case of mine doing an analysis of sales campaign. And I'll try to solve my use case and help you to understand uh, the gaps in analyzing the data with the existing other technologies, which I know. <clears throat> Here is the problem statement I have. Uh, I want to analyze my sales campaign and provide promotions. How do we do it? Uh, I'm getting my data in a streaming manner. So uh, I want to show the number of unique users logged in into my app in a dashboard on a real time and various reports on current campaign. Um, I want to compare the result with my previous campaign as well. Uh, so let's take uh, the common architecture back in the day. When we had not much option to store data, um, the only storage is database. The application store the data to database and basically the report report or the BI tools connect to the data database to generate the report. Um, here is, there is no concept of batch or stream, whatever the data is available, it will be in DB and just go and query it from the DB. Uh, let us review if this app architecture fix my problem. Uh, okay. I can query and get the number of unique users logged into my app. Uh, yeah, basically on a on a real time basis, uh, I can query uh, various report on my current campaign and even the older one because everything is in database. Um, I can compare the report with my previous campaign as all the data in, is in the same DB, uh, but uh, this approach is not a good practice as we don't want to overload the transaction database with all this kind of analytical queries. So how do we fix this? Okay, so this is a typical scenario uh, that the, instead of querying uh, directly from the DB, reports are generated from a data warehouse, but data warehouse does not have the real-time data uh, because uh, data warehouse get populated on a periodic manner. 
uh, example that I get populated once in a day or so. Uh, so here I lost my data freshness. Uh, I want to, uh, I need to wait uh, for a day before I can query the latest data if the data warehouse is populated once in a day. Uh, let's review this architecture if it satisfies my use case. Um, I cannot query and get the number of unique users logged into my app because the data will be loaded to the data warehouse only after some time. Uh, I can query various report on the current campaign and uh, even the older one. Uh, the current campaign means I, I may not be able to query the, the latest one because the latest one will come next day. Uh, again, I cannot compare, cannot compare the report uh, with the previous campaign because the, the current data is not yet available. Uh, as it's in the same DP. Yeah, so I have this limitation. So uh, I, in addition to that, I want fast aggregation, basically in mostly in my analysis, I want to slice and dice, but the slice and dice queries are mostly uh, group by in nature. So I, I need fast group bytes. And I need data freshness as well. So uh, let's see how we can use uh, uh, some other technologies, like I use all app technique where the data is pre-calculated um, and kept. Uh, the goal is uh, the, when we pre-calculate and keep the data or aggregate the data and keep, and then the analysis, the group by queries need to crunch less number of rows and it will be faster. So in OLAP, the data is being aggregated based on some dimension. And uh, one of the common dimension is uh, time dimension. Time dimension is a special di dimension in OLAP. The reason is the event happens over a period and aggregation happens uh, over a period. So uh, I will explain that in detail in the next slide. On a regular interval, I'll say once in a day, the data is read and pre-aggregated and stored in a da different database since it is a pre-aggregated my aggregate queries run faster. Uh, now group by queries, that is the aggregation, um, become lightweight. Now I can do slice and dice in my BI tool and my OLAP DB will hold it. Uh, how do we pre-aggregate? Uh, we will discuss uh, in the some of the common approach for the pre-aggregation. Uh, so here, the input is uh, input data is inserted into a table which holds the data for a smaller granular granular period, say for example one one hour. Till one hour, all the data goes into my goes to this table. Uh, every one hour, uh, last one hour of data is aggregated and stored in a hour level table. The end uh, uh, end of this day. Uh, the previous 24 hours of data from the hour level table is aggregated and stored into the next level of, that is the day level table. Uh, so here is the idea is there will be different tables for different granularity in time. Once the data is aggregated and pushed to the next level of table, it's optional to keep the data because the data is already aggregated and available. The, you can remove this data so that that reduce the load in the, on the system. Um, when you query, the data is queried from a hour level table for the current day and a day level table for the current week and a week level table for the current month and so on and so forth. So always you maximize the usage of uh, aggregated data. So you, you, are, you don't need to crunch or uh, run through all the data in the in the all the rows in the, the data which is ingested because it's a it's an aggregated format. Uh, however, this doesn't work out of the box. This requires some OLAP engine to convert the query uh, to split into multiple queries based on the granularity and so, so forth. But uh, it is possible. But you need to keep this data moving by aggregating from one table to another. Um, this is a lot of work, right? I agree, a lot of maintenance effort. 
uh, there are many places it can break. Like if some reason that is the scheduler didn't run, that I didn't move, it's escalation, a lot of challenges. Maybe mostly maybe get the wrong data as well because there is no alarms we will not get. In this scenario, I'm using a relational database and there is uh, one more challenge there. Uh, relational database is in a single node. So this architecture is not so scalable. As the data starts increasing, the storage of the raw data in the smallest granularity table becomes itself a big challenge. And the cost involved in uh, storing those data, even for a short period of time, it's, it's tremendous. So what's next? With the entry of big data, the entire paradigm change. With the big data technology like uh, uh, Hadoop, MapReduce, and HDFS, huge data can be processed using more number of nodes. Here, the logic is to split the data into multiple smaller unit of work and process in individual nodes and then collect the result back into the back and uh, merge the result. So uh, unlike the earlier approach where the data is processed in a single node, now the data is processed in a distributed manner. Now we can process huge volume of data with this approach. But all these approaches um, in, in all these changes uh, in the process of distributing the workload and merging the result back has effectively increased the latency of the query to a greater extent. The query takes longer duration to complete, not because uh, it had, doesn't have the processing power, but and now it has to do lot more work. It has to split the query, um, distribute it, um, after executing in each node, collect it, merge it. So this uh, this happens over the network and um, there is a latency involved. Uh, in this <clears throat> transition, uh, we lost the capability to process the data in real time and compared to the first scenario okay, where everything is in a DB. Um, yeah, so there are use cases. Uh, we have to process the data in a real time. Uh, so in that scenario, the only option uh, were earlier, it was to query the transaction DB. So there is a alternate approach, approach for doing that is whenever the data uh, event occurred in, at the time it, before it insert into the database, the data is can be replicated into a messaging queue where the data can be processed on the real time and like that. So uh, again, you, you know, this, it's not out of the box. You have to implement this. You have to implement it based on the business logic. When the data can be committed, at that time, you need to push it to a different storage. I mean, different queue messaging service. Um, and doing this reliably, uh, again, is a lot of challenge. Uh, maintenance is a challenge. A lot of exception handling, failure, etc. Uh, however, due to the need for streaming analytics, a set of new set of platform evolved. So Kafka, Spark Streaming, Flink, Storm, uh, this, this uh, platform can read from stream and process the streaming data. Uh, as a some are in a micro batch, one some can have the capability to process one by one, uh, and capable of handling the volume of data by scaling into multiple nodes. So even though there are small differences and similarity across these platforms, it does almost the same job. But the, this framework does not have the support to query both historical data as well as the streaming data. The only option is to fire the query to batch analytic platform and then streaming analytic platform. And someone has to come and do this merge and produce the final result. Often uh, application layer take this job of merging the result because uh, that is a complex part uh, and it's difficult to implement a generic solution at the platform layer. 
So this is a typical Lambda architecture. I don't need to explain about Lambda architecture. Everyone knows that. Uh, where the streaming use case is satisfied in the streaming path and batch use case is satisfied in the batch manner. The data from the Kafka is pushed to HDFS on a regular interval, example for some once in a day. And uh, um, it, whenever there is a uh, query to the batch, the data will be uh, fired to Spark. And whenever there is a uh, need for a real time analysis, uh, the data will be handled by the Spark streaming. Uh, let's come back and review if this satisfy my requirement. Uh, can I query and get the number of unique users logged into my app? Yes, I can. Um, can I query various reports on my current, current campaign? Yes, but no. Yes, because I can query. No, because I cannot query immediately when this event happens. I, I need to wait till the data is made available to the batch system. Um, uh, I cannot compare the report with my previous campaign as the data is in the two different platforms. So some in streaming platform and uh, old data is in batch platform. So either I have to do it by myself, that application has to do it, but the platform cannot do it. Uh, so there are some limitation. We'll review some of the approaches, some, some business tool, uh, even though it is not very prominent. Uh, so one is Hive Stream and other one is Phoenix on top of HBase. Phoenix provides a SQL layer on top of HBase. So using Hive Streaming, we can insert data into Hive in a streaming manner, but there are some limitations. Each streaming, uh, each streaming uh, commits, commit creates one file. Uh, each micro batch, uh, even if it is accumulating as a micro batch and committed, or will also create a file, right? So th this creates small segments, small files, and that uh, is a big problem in Hadoop. Uh, now, what are the limitations? So we, the limitation is data freshness. You know that the streaming, uh, the stream commits can uh, happen only after a few minutes, and otherwise there will be a compaction pressure. Uh, then the query latency. Uh, Hive is in general good for batch kind of workload as overhead of the query is relatively higher. So even with the small data, the query completes with longer duration, like more than five seconds extra. Each query need to be spin up, need to spin up a container, hence not good for use case, which requires high concurrency. It doesn't work out of the box, you need to build a data pipeline to read the data from Kafka. Um, um, batch it in some other technology like Spark or NiFi, et cetera, and insert into five. Um, this involved higher uh, resource utilization and more components are involved in this. Okay, go on. Um, in 2020, Apache Con, our CTO Gian Marlino has explained uh, more about categorizing various big data processing and storage engines. In his talk, he's categorized HBase as a uh, serving database, as a serving layer. Uh, I also like to stick on to that. Uh, I call um, HBase as a serving layer. Um, by the way, if you didn't see that it's a awesome uh, talk, never miss that uh, talk. Um, yeah, coming back to the HBase, uh, um, HBase is essentially a key value store with very low latency, hence we could pre-aggregate the data and keep it in HBase. Uh, the consuming app query this pre-aggregated data and uh, display. Um, display in the sense, uh, pre-aggregate the data and uh, provide it to the PI tool. Uh, the challenges, data freshness, uh, data need to be pre-aggregated in some other platform and it's possible only after aggregating the data, data can be pushed into HBase. 
uh, aggregation is slow. Even though HBase, it's a, it's a basically a key value store and it no, not a good candidate for a aggregation uh, kind of queries. It is very efficient in kind of a pointed query like select a column where table equal to key equal to ABC. That's a good candidate, but not a good candidate for a group by queries. Uh, even the uh, data is pre-aggregated based on the query for the uh, aggregation might be required on top of the pre-aggregated data. Uh, in those scenarios, this becomes really slow. Uh, we need to build a pipeline uh, to read the data from the Kafka, pre-aggregate in Spark, insert into HBase. It involves multiple technologies to be honest. Uh, pre-aggregation based on each use, use case is a lot of work. Not a suitable candidate for slice and dice kind of use case and maintaining the pipeline and maintaining more platform and monitoring them, not only laborious, but require expertise in those technology. Even though this is not directly comes under uh, total cost of ownership, indirectly contributes to the cost uh, of maintaining the resource, maintaining the skill within the company. Uh, what if there is a single platform which is capable of ingesting data with best ingestion rate and can provide a single view on batch and real-time data with very low latency? Uh, let's try this with Apache Trade. Uh, see this architecture. It's really simple. Druid has the capability to ingest the data for from the streaming platform. So as soon as the data is ingested, which will take few milliseconds, the data is available for query, and this ensure the data freshness. Uh, let's review if this architecture satisfy my use case. I can query and get the number of unique user logged into my app. Uh, can I query the various reports uh, on my current campaign? Yes, data is readily available once it is ingested. Uh, I can compare the report with my previous uh, campaign as the data is in the same Druid uh, cluster. So Druid provides a single view of my real-time data and batch data. Okay, so I don't need to worry about which is real-time, what is batch. So what is Druid? Druid is um, Apache open source. It's a high-performance column-oriented column distributed data store. Uh, high-performance means low query latency and high ingestion rate. We are in, we are best in this category. Uh, column oriented, best possible scan rate. Uh, distributed meaning uh, it can be scaled to hundreds and thousands of nodes. Uh, data store, um, it's a clustered architecture. So a copy of the data uh, can, can be stored locally and query from it. Uh, this is one of the reasons Druid is very fast. For those who are new to Druid, I'll take a minute to explain the Druid architecture and its component. Uh, it consists of query node, data node, and master node. Uh, master node have a coordinator service which coordinates and manage all the historical data, all the data within, within Druid, within Druid cluster. So overload, a service manages the real-time ingestion part of it. Uh, now, the query node accepts the query and split into multiple sub-queries and sent it to the data node. This is effectively done by a service called Docker within the query node. Data node has two jobs. First one, the middle manager service in the data node need to respond to queries on real-time data and at the same time, ingest the data. Uh, historical service, uh, it has only one job. Uh, it needs to respond to the subqueries coming from the broker. Now, what broker will do, it collects the results from the historical as well as the middle manager 
and merge this two result back and uh, send it to client. Uh, these are some of the typical use case uh, where the data is also huge and need real time analysis. And but uh, to be honest, this is not uh, limited to any of these four particles. How can I get help? Um, yeah, so there are uh, Druid forums you can sign up, and uh, there are community, Druid community, Apache Druid community. It's a really active community. Subscribe for the mail. Um, there are Google groups, I mean, uh, for Druid. Uh, sign up for the meetup groups. They are as a as of channel for uh, Druid. Um, please add, uh, if you are already working, uh, in the Druid technology, please add your skill set in and uh, LinkedIn. Okay, so we have seen how this BI platform evolved, discuss about the architecture based on the big data, seen some possible streaming architecture, how Apache Druid simplifies the analytic landscape, uh, and we have seen the Druid architecture. Um, also, you know, now how to reach out to the community. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you very much for this great opportunity to share my thoughts on real time and batch analytics using Apache Druid. Thanks for watching.